Good morning, friends. We're so happy you're joining us today for worship. And uh, I'm in a different location, if you can see. <laughs> a beautiful view up here of the Smoky Mountains. I'm at the residence of Reverend Arnie and Mrs. Connie Walker. They've graciously uh, received us today as a location for our worship and it does feel like holy ground. I hope you can hear some of the birds singing in the background and uh, Reverend Arnie will be our preacher for today and I brought my violin to help us sing our opening hymn for the beauty of the earth. So I hope you'll uh, look at the lyrics there on the comment box and sing along with us. And this morning we celebrate Father's Day and want to extend a, a very warm and loving greeting to all our fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, stepfathers, uh, godfathers, and those who have been like fathers to us. We're so grateful for those men who have blessed our lives, are blessing our lives. So happy, happy Father's Day to all of you. And uh, we hope you're following us on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel. You can subscribe there on YouTube. And uh, we're offering prayer services as well, occasionally over these next few weeks, to pray for an end to racial injustice in our land and in our world, in our country and communities. So some of those prayer services are offered there at Facebook and YouTube as well. But this morning, Sunday morning, let's give our worship and attention to God, and I invite you to sing with us now. For the beauty of the earth. For singing with us. Now I'm so pleased to introduce to you the Reverend Arnie Walker and we're delighted to hear his message today and pray God's blessings upon him as we open our ears and hearts. Arnie, thank you. Thank you Pastor Barbara for the privilege of being able to preach today. Today marks the 63rd year of ministry for me, and on the day marks the 59th year of my ordination. Seattle, Washington, 1961, June 21st. Grace be multiplied to you, and peace will be your gift from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us pray. 
We're surrounded by clouds, clouds of uncertainty, clouds of fear, clouds relating to disease, clouds relating to death, clouds relating to racial injustice. And yet, Father in heaven, this day we acknowledge that the Son of Righteousness is behind the clouds, ready to break through and to use us as willing instruments of your love and grace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today it's my challenge to blend together Father's Day and Pentecost. And I want to do that under the theme of breath. Breath. Breath in Scripture has to do with life. In Genesis, God breathed into man and he became alive. In Acts and in John also, the Holy Spirit breathed into man and he took on life. First, let's look at spirit, physical life. Physical life those who've had the privilege of being present for the birth of a baby know the wonder and awe of life. Those of us who have grown older, who have a half a dozen specialists and have week by week and year by year gotten a medical education have indeed been in awe of the billions of chemical interactions that are going on in harmony and sometimes disharmony within our body. The breath of physical life, we seek to be good stewards of that gift that God has entrusted to us. And today we say thank you to God for the breath of life that has brought our physical being into this reality. Then we turn to spiritual life. God has entrusted us with the gift of the Holy Spirit as he breathed upon us to give us newness of life. We are only half alive if we are only alive physically. If we allow this Holy Spirit to move and work within us, we can become fully alive in Jesus Christ. We pray for that Holy Spirit. We pray that he would particularly bless and use our fathers. And we thank God for the fathers who are Holy Spirit infused, who share that spirit to bring life and transformation to individuals, and to our world. We need life. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Not too long ago, I finished a book called No Surrender. It's written by a pastor who had tried to get some stories from his dad about the war, and he would never share them. And finally, through research and conversations, he was able to put together a book and to discover that his dad indeed was a hero. And two incidents of the life of the Spirit in his dad's life. One as a commander of a crew of 1,200, 
as they were in prisoner of war camp in Germany, he was commanded to take 1,200 men on a winter march. With a gun to his head, he absolutely refused. He said, I will not do that. It will mean a sure and certain death for all of our men. Even with the threat of his own life, he stood firm and the Germans backed down. Some months later, they were going to segregate out the Jews, and everyone was clear about why they were doing that. They were clear that this would mean a sure and certain death of 200 of their 1,200. And once again, this author of No Surrenders, Dad commanded his crew to stand firm, to have no one step out. And despite again being threatened, he stood firm. And once again, a miracle happened that the Germans backed down. And so being open to the Spirit of God to speak the truth, to act in love, to act in integrity, to act in, in transforming power from the source of life in the Holy Spirit, we acknowledge and celebrate the life of a very uncommon man, and we pray that that same spirit of life might touch us, that we might be instruments as we pray, Holy Spirit, come, that that spirit might come and empower us to be his healing agent in a world that is broken and so in need of that healing touch. We pray all that along with whatever else you see that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Arnie. We join our prayers with yours for our world, for the church. And uh, this morning we're praying for our friend John, who had surgery this week, for Danny, who is facing surgery ahead in the next couple of weeks, for Reverend Dan as he recovers from procedures recently in the hospital, and for Judith's granddaughter, born on Tuesday who's been in the neonatal ICU. Uh, we pray for little Genevieve and her mother to be well after the delivery, the birthing. Uh, and uh, we pray for George Floyd's family. We continue our prayers for uh, Maurice Gordon's family, Breonna Taylor's family, Rashard Brooks's family, all those impacted by the horrors and violence and oppression of racism and we pray for ourselves to be used as instruments of God's peace, knowing that peace can come only when there is justice for all persons and equity. So uh, we join with prayers for all who are affected by the virus, coronavirus. Uh, we've heard of more cases this week and our hearts have been touched by the loss of lives this week in our county. And uh, so we join our prayers with yours and again, giving thanks to God for the gift of family, however yours is configured uh, with uh, father-like uh, mentors and mother-like mentors and brothers and sisters of all kinds and cousins. We're thankful for the gift of family and for the family of the church. So we remember that we have the boldness to pray as children of God as our Lord has taught us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Barney, will you close us with a benediction? That was the music of Georg Philipp Telemann. As you go your way, may God go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen.